Sometimes when people see me, they think I'm this tough solo traveler when I tell them, you know, I traveled around India and Nepal on my own. But you know what? It really wasn't always this way at all. And uh, I almost didn't go to India because I was really worried about it. Um, I remember one of my best friends and I were talking and she had traveled to India and Nepal all on her own. And by the way, she's just kind of a badass, right? So hearing her talk about how things, you know, get around town, I was like, okay, of course she can solo travel, but whatever. So she said that Nepal was really chill and easygoing. So I was like, okay, great. So I went to Nepal before India and really I had a tough time some of the time when I was in Nepal and it almost stopped me from going to India. And it was in the most unexpected and surprising situation. So I've been staying in Pokhara, which is near a lake. It's a really pretty area of Nepal. And I went to a, I was staying at a monastery that's just outside town. And they told me about a Tibetan refugee camp that you can go visit. So, you know, went by myself and walked up the road, went to visit the Tibetan refugee camp. And when I was there, I was the only tourist that I saw around. And I was like walking through the little village and there were these, like all these people set up wanting to sell their stuff. They had like mala beads, just all sorts of jewelry and things just set up ready to sell. So I'm on my own, I'm outnumbered. And they were like, you know, oh, buy this, buy this. And I was just like, oh, I'm just going to the temple. You know, I didn't want to see the monks. And they were like, well, when you come back, stop here. And I was like, okay, okay. By the way, that day I learned, don't agree. Just say like, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't think so if it's if that's kind of how you're feeling but so I was just like yeah yeah okay okay so I just went to uh, the temple saw the monks it was great saw the chanting on my way back I felt like I was a uh, I was ambushed except I saw it coming you know but it was like I was outnumbered there were all these people they're like okay you said you stop you know you have to buy buy here but then they were really laying on the guilt and they were laying it on pretty hard they were like you know you should buy for helping you know just buy this costs less than a cup of coffee in the u.s and i was like oh my god this feels so manipulative and at the time i'm traveling and sure i'm there but i don't have an abundance of money you know i don't need this stuff i didn't want to buy anything and it felt like an unpleasant experience for me i felt helpless i felt trapped and it wasn't a good feeling and I was thinking to myself, if I can't handle a Tibetan refugee camp, which I thought was going to be a super tranquil place, but like if I can't handle a Tibetan refugee camp, how am I going to handle traveling to India on my own? And I almost didn't go because I didn't know the answer to that. I was like, how am I going to handle it on my own? Um, but I went anyway. And ultimately what I decided is that I didn't want to be limited by by my own perceptions of myself also. Like I should be able to say no if I don't want to buy something, right? Because ultimately, ultimately it came down to me. These people were not actually forcing me to do anything. I just needed to stand up for myself and have a little bit of like, no. I don't want anything, thank you, have a nice day. And to be able to say it in a nice way. It doesn't have to be a mean, negative confrontation just because I'm saying no to something. I can just say no, you know? Um, and that's something that I learned. It's like, I can travel to India. I can do these things that feel a little bit outside of my comfort zone. I don't have to be limited by fear and concern. And ultimately, it's, I felt like it's, it's a lesson that I need to learn eventually in my life. And it's a lesson that's still ongoing. You know, it's not like, okay, I went to India and so now I'm, you know, fearless traveler, never have any concerns. Things still come up and it's still a journey. But I've definitely learned to be more, to be a little bit more fearless, you know, to maybe have these concerns, but to move beyond it. And it was really good for me. And even here, by the way, I'm in Thailand right now and it's nighttime. I walk around at night by myself. I travel all these roads and down these little alleys and I know that I'm safe and I know that it will be okay. And that wasn't always true for me either. I used to be really nervous walking alone at night, even in the US, you know? And, uh, and it's something that I've overcome and travel can be really good for that. But I think also I just wanted to share this because I think sometimes it's easy to look at travelers and people who are solo traveling and to just assume that it's always been a smooth ride 
and an easy ride. And it's definitely not always the case. It's definitely not always the case with me. So even though I look like this, okay, I'm traveling around India solo, I'm traveling around Thailand on my own, you know, I still had things that I had to deal with and things that made me uncomfortable and things that I had to work on. So it's a journey, I'm on it. I'm happy to have you on this journey with me. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do that now and join me on the rest of this as I try not to get hit by, oh my God, <laughs> as I try not to get hit by song towels going down the road in Thailand. So, <laughs> that's it.